Well, as we mentioned, we're gaining new insights into a series of text messages between U.S. diplomats and a senior Ukrainian aide. They revealed just how Trump administration officials worked alongside the president's personal attorney, Rudy Giuliani, to pressure Ukraine into investigating former Vice President Joe Biden and his son Hunter. In response to the revelations, Democratic frontrunner Senator Elizabeth Warren tweeted, Donald Trump must be impeached. Her remarks come as we're also learning new details about a June phone call between President Trump and the president of China. During that call, President Trump reportedly discussed the Massachusetts senator as well as the former VP. But this morning, the president said that he would not let his calls for China to investigate Biden influence next week's crucial trade talks with Beijing. With more insights into how 2020 candidates are responding, Eliza Collins covers politics for The Wall Street Journal, and she joins us now from Washington. So, Eliza, we've seen Elizabeth Warren respond to the latest allegations. What does the Biden camp have to say about all this? Well, the Biden campaign has been very upset about this. They're saying that this is a lie, that there's no there there about President Trump. They have not come out in response to this text messages specifically, but I imagine they will continue to just drumbeat, basically saying that the president is going after Biden and it is false, and he is doing it from a political motivation because he sees Biden as a threat. So Biden and Warren are, are big supporters of this impeachment inquiry, but at some point, are there any Democrats, Democratic candidates out there that just don't support it? At this point, every major Democrat, not major, every Democratic candidate for president supports at least an impeachment inquiry. But some have gone further saying they support impeachment, while some have said, let's look into it, and then it's up to the House and Senate to decide, actually, if it, they should impeach and convict the president. You know, <clears throat> Excuse me, yesterday in Reno, Nevada, Biden said that his son Hunter would be joining him on the campaign trail. What's the strategy there in bringing him out? Well, the strategy there is that the Biden campaign wants to say that, you know, what the president is saying is false and that it should not be taking down his campaign. So if Biden is saying Hunter is going on the campaign trail with him, that assumes that Hunter Biden can help him win. And so they're basically saying, you know, Hunter is actually an asset here. The president is incorrect. We're using him. V voters respond well to him. It's really just being dismissive of what the president and his allies are saying about the Biden family. Wasn't there a point early on in this campaign that the, the Biden camp was kind of worried that Hunter, you know, even before all this Ukraine stuff came out, that he could potentially be a liability for the campaign? Well, there was definitely reporting about that. Um, Hunter Biden is not his dad. He has had his own life, and there are some controversial things in it. So I think there was some reporting that the Biden campaign wasn't quite sure how to deal with that. But now they're fully embracing it because they're saying that um, what the president is out there saying is incorrect and has gone way too far. And they're basically they're saying it's a lie. And so they're saying, look, Hunter Biden's here. He's going to help you know Vice President Joe Biden get elected. And, you know, all this comes as final Q3 fundraising numbers are out. And today we learned Warren has raised $24.6 million. Those numbers are right on the heels of Bernie Sanders, but it still eclipses Biden's numbers. So, so what does that indicate to you about Warren's standing in the race? Well, Warren is someone we've seen who has had a lot of momentum. This number definitely shows that that momentum is continuing. Um, Warren and Bernie Sanders, who exactly you said, did actually outraise her by a bit. Um, they both are not taking big money. So they are taking all of their money from grassroots donors. So those numbers are significant because it means that there are people donating small amounts of money that they can keep tapping for more and more money throughout the campaign. Joe Biden came in at $15 million, also a large haul, but much smaller than those two ahead of him, and he is taking big money. So some of his donors have already maxed out, so he's not able to go back to them for money. So what Warren and Sanders are doing is that they've really tapped into a grassroots movement, and it's really paying off for them. So is, any concern from the Biden camp about Warren's fundraising numbers, and are they worried that the attacks that President Trump are launching on Biden could affect perception among Democratic voters? You know, I think you have to be worried about that. I think, you know, Warren raised almost $10 million more than him. She is the one candidate who, if you look at a line graph, is moving up. Biden is still the front runner, but his numbers kind of are stagnant at the top. And now he has these new attacks. So I think those things definitely do concern the campaign. They're dismissing them right now. You know, they're saying that Joe Biden is going out to make the case. You talked about in Reno, he gave a um, interview to a local outlet there and said, you know, my family's been through much harder things than 
the president attacking me and we'll just go forward. You know, Joe Biden, of course, lost his wife, his daughter, um, his son. So he's saying that there's much tougher things out there. But you have to look at these numbers and also look at these attacks and say there's some concern. Mm -hmm. And in the meantime, you know, I'm curious about Senator Sanders. He's recovering after getting two stents put in earlier this week. Have we heard anything more about him and um, any medical concerns on the campaign trail? Well, yeah, that was a surprise. I was out in Las Vegas. He was set to have a, you know, really intense um, haul, basically, in Las Vegas and then in California after a campaign event. He had some chest pain, went to the hospital, ended up getting two stents put in. Um, he, They canceled all the events going forward, but the campaign has now come back and said he will be at that October 15th debate. Um, Jane Sanders, his wife, has said that they expect him to head back to Vermont in a few days. So they're saying, you know, he is recovering, he's doing well, he's joking. They're they're using it to highlight his push for a government-run Medicare for all. But, of course, this does—it hurts at a time when, you know, he needs to be out there, he needs to be campaigning, because Elizabeth Warren has been eclipsing him. You know, he did outraise her a little bit, but she's definitely doing better than him in poll numbers. And so it's a time that he wants to be out there showing people he's healthy and vital. So, of course, there's concern, but he is doing better. That's good to hear. Eliza Collins, thank you very much for joining us. Thanks.